Hey, welcome in this new video. I hope you're doing great. Hope your day is great. And stay for that video because, well, we are going to answer a pretty serious question for you and for me, actually, which is, are we going to be replaced by AI? A few months ago, news came out and, wow, that news had the effect of a real, like, nightmare, actually, for the engineering world because that was the announcement of GitHub Copilot. And GitHub Copilot is a new service from GitHub described as your new AI pair programmer. So instead of taking a lot of time to find your answers on Stack Overflow, well, the AI will suggest you some codes, some solutions, according to what you are typing in real time. From what I saw, it's pretty insane how it works well. But at the same time, it's pretty scary because of that. In this video, we are going to see if GitHub Copilot works as expected, can we create data pipelines for the best practices with it? And are we gonna be replaced in the near future because of it? So without further ado, let's get started. First thing first, I never tried Copilot before that video, so I'm not even sure what I should expect from it, but let's discover this together. And the first thing is, if you want to install Copilot, well, you will have to go to that page and then click on sign up because Copilot is still in the early stage of development. So you have to click on sign up and then right there you will have some instructions where basically you will put your email address and then you will receive an email saying, hey, actually you got just validated and you can install Copilot as a plugin for Visual Studio Code. The way to install it is pretty easy. And once you have it, you can go back to your Visual Studio Code, click on plugins, look for Copilot. And the next step is to enable that beast. So click on enable and now you should be ready to use your AI pair programmer. So let's see what we can do with it. To be honest with you, I don't even know how it works. So let's take a look at their website first, if we have any documentation. Okay, let's scroll down. Uh, okay, convert comments to code. Write a comment describing the logic you want. So I guess if I want to create a data pipeline with it, I just need to describe that data pipeline in a comment, which sounds really great. All right. Auto field for repetitive code, right? Test, perfect. Uh, show me alternatives. Oh, that's that sounds great. I mean, there are definitely different ways of creating the same data pipeline or the same code. And it's not only interesting because, well, you can choose the best solution, but also that's how you learn, right? I mean, by looking at different solutions, you can see which solution is better optimized than another. So I like this. I really like this feature. All right, let's see if we have something else. Uh, looks like not how it works. All right. Oh yeah, and actually how it works, that's pretty interesting because from what I know so far, it's a machine learning model behind the scene, or I guess multiple machine learning models, and they scrap the code that they can find on a ton of different public repositories, which is actually why there was so much controversy when Copilot got released, because maybe you don't want to have your code within an AI without having been notified for that. So. But yeah, that's how it works. And basically, if you don't want to have your code in Copilot, make sure that your GitHub repository is private. Um, all right, so I think that's pretty much it. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's create our first data pipeline. So create a new DAG in the folder DAGs called copilot.py. All right, so let's start with a very simple data pipeline. For example, uh, I just want to print a message on the standard output using the Python operator. So I guess I just need to create a comment. So create a data pipeline. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I, okay. It auto completes the comment. Okay. To read the data from the copilot now, uh, let's call it like create a data pipeline with the DAG ID uh, copilot and the schedule interval, uh, let's say schedule interval to weekly with one operator or no, one task using the Python operator and a task ID, uh, let's say, well, okay, copilot underscore task underscore one. Well, I have to say that looks pretty scary so far. I mean, the fact that it can auto complete what I want uh, in advance, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a bit scary. All right, and uh, let's say that prints the message, hi, copilot, 
on the standard output. Okay, all right, so that's it. Uh, and now, what should I do? I don't know, maybe from airflow, um, from airflow, import DAG, and then what? I don't know what should happen here. <laughs> maybe with DAG? Am I gonna get some code here? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I got some code here. All right. Let's see. Damn. That's that's pretty that's pretty impressive. I mean, we got the DAG ID copilot. The scheduled interval is weekly, I guess, here. We have some default args. Well, actually, I didn't specify that I want any default arguments, but the fact that the start date is equal to this, well, you can clearly see that this code has been fetched somewhere in a in a, in a Git repository, all right? So we have some default arguments as DAG with one task, T1, and the task ID copilot task one with the right Python function that will print a message I copilot on the standard output. So it's pretty amazing so far because with just only two commands, I'm able to create this data pipeline. So it saves a lot of time I have to admit that, and it works pretty well. Okay, now why not doing something more difficult? For example, choosing one task or another according to a condition with the branch Python operator. So first, I guess I need to create a function. And again, to do that, I'm gonna use copilot to see if it works. So create a function called check underscore accuracy that returns a string accuracy if the variable my underscore accuracy is equal to let's say five and not or inaccurate otherwise okay so let's see what we get now check accuracy my accuracy oh <laughs> all right so as you can see with just one comment again I'm able to create that, that function. Okay, that, that's perfect. All right, so now we have the function here. Let's see if we can use it. So create two tasks, create two tasks with the dummy operator. Well, the first one, task ID, and let's call it accurate, accurate. And the second one, task ID, inaccurate. Okay, so T2 equals to the dummy operator. Task ID I create. And yeah, I don't I don't need DAG here because the way the DAG is instantiated, I use with, so you don't have to put the DAG object again and again. So actually that's that's a mistake, but why not? Why not? Alright, so T2 and let's create the second task, so the dummy operator again. Inaccurate. Okay, we have the two tasks, T2 and T3, and we want to select either T2 and T3 according to that function, check underscore accuracy. So let's create a new task with the branch Python operator this time. Again, a new command, create a task with the branch Python operator, task ID, select underscore accuracy, and the Python callable will be check underscore accuracy. Let's create that task. Perfect, T4, task ID, and the Python callable. <laughs> that's, that's just crazy. All right, so we got the branch Python operator, and now it should select either accurate or inaccurate according to the value of that variable. And here, it's not accuracy, it's accurate. So let's modify this. Same thing here, and now we are done. The last step is to define the dependencies. So let's do this right now. At the end of the data pipeline, we're gonna say that T4 depends on T1, T2 and T3 depend on T4. So let's see what we get. Okay, T1, T2, T3, T4. Uh, I'm not sure that's exactly what I want T2 and T3 depend on T4, but now it's T4 that depends on T3 and T2. So that's 
that's not correct at all, right? Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can do something better here. So t4 depends on t1. Okay, we set up stream. Well, that's really the old way of creating your dependencies in Airflow. You shouldn't use uh, those functions, set upstream and set downstream. Use the bitshift operators instead. But okay, so that's the first dependency. And now let's say t2 and t3 depend on t4. So what we get now, okay. Okay, so let's save the file and let's see what we get on the Airflow UI. Copilot, graph view, and we get it. So it works. I mean, this very simple data pipeline, but still this data pipeline has been created using GitHub Copilot. So that means Copilot works, but I strongly believe that we shouldn't take Copilot as, you know, this um, AI that will replace us because I don't think ultimately that it is the goal of Copilot. I mean, when you think of it, we got some mistakes, right? The dependencies weren't correct or the DAG object wasn't needed for our operator. And you still have to describe what you want. But you may say, yeah, this is the early stage development. So maybe in the future, Copilot will become a beast and then it will be smart enough in order to create the code uh, without us. Maybe, maybe, who knows? But the thing is, I strongly believe that, again, it's not the goal of Copilot. In my opinion, we should think of Copilot as a really smart tool in order to code faster so that we can just focus on things that really matter. And the stuff that we create again and again, well, we can use Copilot for saving us a lot of time. So that's how I see Copilot. I don't know what you think about it. Please let me know in the comment below. And obviously, if you're interested by learning more about it, please let me know because right now we only have this very simple data pipeline, but I'm pretty sure that we can create a definitely more complex one. Take care and see you for our next video.